you're all coming in. We had this incredible apple pie. Now, those of you that know me, Don and I, we re really don't do dessert. And so I was like, being polite, like have a little piece of apple pie. I ate the whole thing. I'm like in a sugar coma right now. It's amazing. So, this is what people that these sweets go through. Wow, this is really cool. So, <laughs> yeah, some of you got that. Anyways, um, if you don't know me, I'm Greg Brown. And now some of you are saying, man, I picked the wrong room. No, you didn't. You're okay. <laughs> Lock the door. You have to stay. Okay. So. All right. I'll give you guys just a, a quick background on who I am. Um, I'm, I'm the pastor of Skyway Church out in Goodyear, Arizona, but we're really an apostolic center. And I'm not here to teach on apostolic centers, but we just came from Corinth, Texas, where it was called Apostolic Centers Arising. I was one of the platform speakers for that event over with Chuck. And some of you that are here, I, I, I see that are at this conference or convocation were there as well. And I really think God is up to something very significant. And the things that were being released in Corinth uh, about the merging of apostolic centers and how that's going to change the face of the church. And it's going to advance the kingdom into the emerging season is very significant. Chuck really focused on this two-year window. And I imagine all of you were here last night. I think last night was probably one of the most significant things we have heard about our state. Yeah. Yeah. That that I, I know that, you know, like you said, we've been in this window of kind of like a holding pattern. Now, what I've been sensing in my spirit, what's been stirring in my spirit has... In, in 2012, I wrote this book, Seven Laws of Breakthrough. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we're going to break through to possess our prophetic promises today. Amen. And the reason I'm, I'm sharing this isn't because I want to promote the book, but I asked the Holy Spirit, what am I supposed to, to say in this, in this breakthrough session? And he said, it's in the book. <laughs> uh, I'm like, I, uh, I wrote it in 2011 and printed in 2012, so I had to go back. I'm like, man, this is good stuff, Lord. So, but let me give you a quick summary of why why this book is written. Is that breakthrough is not a moment; it's a process. And the Holy Spirit says, it's "Not a moment; it is a process." And so everybody's looking for a moment, and we're hoping for some relief from the pressure. And we're looking for the wrong thing. What we're calling breakthrough is, is really escapism and, and just some relief. But if you really want a breakthrough, you're going to go through cycles and seasons. And each time you cycle before you break through into your next level of spiritual authority and your next level of destiny, you will go through your greatest test. Anybody going through any tests lately? <laughs> Open the door and invite more people in. So anyway, so... So really what the Holy Spirit was saying, he's... Seriously, I believe that really the process, the seven laws of breakthrough is, is a now word for where the church is at. Because when I was writing this, it was whenever everybody was really depressed about the economy. And, and people have lost their homes and things like that. Many of you from Arizona know how hard we were hit. And Arizona was really hit. And we were out in the West Valley. We really got hammered out that direction. And there was just this kind of dark cloud over everybody. We were doing church, but it was kind of depressing to do it. You know what I mean? And, and, the, and it was like, it's like the Holy Spirit told me, tell the people it's all going to change. And suddenly, I heard the word breakthrough. So I thought it was a message, and it turned into a series, and then it turned into a book. And what it really is, is the process 
of taking you through a season where you're depressed and discouraged and thinking that, you know, it's not going to change. Suddenly, God puts an inspiration inside of you and you come alive and it gives you a track. It gives you a process for God to take you into your next season. And I think that's where the church is at. So we're at Apostolic Centers Arising and uh, with Chuck a couple weeks ago. And I was with Becca Greenwood and some others. Uh, and we were just talking about what's going on. And I said to Becca, I said, the next two years are the most important season that we're going to have. I said, I expect incredible things to happen in the next two years. And Becca looked at me and I, I said, Becca, you're a prophet. Tell me if I'm accurate. And she looked at me and she said, Greg, I'm telling you this. There's two years of acceleration for you. And there's two years of acceleration for the church. Like we've never seen. Yes, Lord. And so we go out of the green room and we head back into the next session. And Chuck breaks out the teaching we watched last night. Wow. And so Beck and I kind of stare at each other and we nod. You know, you know, there's times you hear something, you think it's the Lord, but you want to get that confirmation from the other prophets. Yes. And now you're at a you're at a prophetic conv convocation right now. How many of you sense something is up in the next two years that we need to be ready for? We need to participate in it. And I really believe that the, the gates of darkness are really trying to stop us from moving into it. You know, it's like Chuck was saying that the enemy is in your gate. And so we have to dislodge the enemy from our gate. And so I, I just took a few of the principles from the very beginning of the, the first chapter, and, and I'm going to talk about that. I want to tie it also to Deb Welch's book. Deb, stand up. Where's Deb at? Big hand for Deb. She put this book together, Unlocking Arizona's Prophetic Destiny. Now, Deb's part of our apostolic team, and when she started putting this 21-day devotional together for the state of Arizona, she came to me with the concept and I said, Deb, this is truly the Lord. You really need to put this together. She got hit with a huge download of the Holy Spirit and literally put this together. Was it in 30 days or three weeks? Three weeks. Less than 30 days, the, the body of this information was put together. But I really believe all of you from Arizona, we need to grab hold of this because you war with your prophetic words. And, and one of the most unusual words, I'm not even going to tell you the, the depth of it. But I, she said, she said, Greg, I'm waiting for you to give me your portion of the book. And I said, the, the most significant word that we're going to have for Arizona came from a man named Henry Groover. Has anybody here ever heard of Henry Groover? Okay. So I said, you know, and Henry's all over the world. He spent a lot of time in Japan. And I said, Deb, I really don't want to tell you what Henry said. We need to connect you to Henry to get what Henry said. The next day in our Wednesday morning prayer, Henry walks in and says, I just came in from Japan. Oh, wow. And so I said to Henry, I said, Henry, now our Wednesday morning prayer is a, is a prayer gathering that we webcast and we just send it all over the world and all over the state and everything else. And it's at 9 a.m. Arizona time. If you can log on, you should be part of this Wednesday morning prayer movement. Okay. And so I said, Henry, I want you to tell the story of this prophetic word. And he began to tell the whole story. And, and it's about, he, there was a vision of golden net over all of the Phoenix, greater Phoenix area. And the angels are holding the net. And the prophetic word is this, that when all the pastors are fully united in the purposes of God, that the angels will let down their net. And Brother Glenn Foster grabbed hold of that word. Now, Glenn's gone on to be with the Lord. He played a significant role in my life. How many of you have, have had a significant touch from God because of Brother Glenn? So Glenn took that word and warred with that word. It still hasn't come to pass, but I really believe that it is going to come to pass. But in the providence of God, the greater Phoenix area is, has so many more souls to harvest. And we have to be able to understand that there's things that are God is positioning us for in this time. And so along with my book that, that talks about the seven laws that I think are significant in helping us embrace process, the process of God, 
I really think everyone that's committed to the prophetic destiny of Arizona, we should be getting this book and praying this book. And, and like I was visiting with Lenore and some of the others yesterday, Hal and Cheryl, who's having their breakout session next door, we need to really have a strategy of pulling this all together. We need to look at our calendar in the next 18 months and say, how are we gathering strategically to break through into our next season? And I think we've all gone to enough conferences and we've all heard enough things that were exciting. But what I believe is in the heart of everybody at this convocation, you didn't come here to hear the latest, greatest. You came here because you have a sincere belief that there's a prophetic destiny that we must break through and break into. And that's why you're here. And I think that's why God even moved Chuck to be here for that one night that he's normally not away on first fruits. And he released that word to us last night. And so with that, that's just kind of background of, of where I think we're at and what, where I think we need to go. The Lord spoke to me, was it last August, Deb? And Deb is such a great connector. And, and I said, Deb, we, the Lord said we have to start connecting Arizona once again. Because I think Arizona has gotten scattered in the downturn. And so we kind of go here, there, and everywhere. But what, what the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart said, it's time for the state to be reconvened. And so we've been doing a Tuesday morning leadership prayer meeting once a month. It's, our, it's called Ascend International Prayer. If you're a leader of a ministry, the first Tuesday of every month, we convene at Skyway at uh, 930 for meet and greet 10 o'clock we webcast and we we go into across the nation into mexico and everywhere else but the lord is saying the leaders must convene and so we've been doing this and and i'm pouring my heart and my resources and our our team into seeing the prophetic destiny of arizona achieved because i i sincerely believe the next two years Everything is going to change. And now, listening to Brother Chuck, I'm getting more clarity. But I'm speaking from the conviction of my heart what Holy Spirit has shared with me about the two-year window. And when Brother Chuck shares, it just brings greater clarity. But if there was ever a time we need to be serious about being united in intentional purpose, being united in intentional ways... I think now is the time. On the opposite side of the coin, I believe that we're also in a season that the enemy is going to do everything he can to try to discourage you from going through your door. And you're going to be facing opposition. You're going to be facing things. You probably have already faced things. And I think that there's a treacherous spirit that's out there right now. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about it. Then we're going to break it off. There's things, there's things the Lord said that we're going to break off today and release today before this session is over. This is not just a time to gain information. This is a time to gain impartation. The, the army is in boot camp right now. And, and by the grace of God, when we, when we leave these doors, there's going to be some new tools put into your hands before we leave. But this treacherous spirit is causing brothers and sisters to turn against one another. And there's this, this quickness to judge. And we could talk about the explanation why, but I, I, would just, I would just put this out for all of us right now. That if, if you've been facing this, if you've been on the wrong side of this and things of that nature, we're going to have to war through this and be very intentional to guard our unity and guard our hearts. And so even as we start bringing the streams together in Arizona and we start connecting and I know I know where my regional connection is where my regional authority is. And and I I really just sense that Colorado, Arizona and Mexico are going to have a huge breakthrough together. And so my, my friends from Pennsylvania, you're in the right place at the right time, because, see, it isn't just like us three and, and we're ignoring everybody else. But I think that as there's these types of alignments that 
when there's a breakthrough going where you're assigned to breakthrough, it releases anointing to others into your assignment for breakthrough. So even if you're say my assignment isn't for those three areas, why am I in this session? Is because that when you align together, all of a sudden the breakthrough anointing just starts shattering strongholds and everybody starts breaking through on the left and the right. And so through my relationships with Brother Chuck, through my relationships with Cheon, that the, the network goes global. But I know where my regional authority is right now. And I think you need to know where is your regional authority. And the enemy is going to try to bring a treacherous spirit to break relationships where you have regional authority. And so you have to guard your heart against that. You have to guard your heart against judging one another and criticizing one another. And so, you know, this is, this is kind of the, the giant in the door. But we're going to have to overcome the giant in the door. Let's go ahead, and I think everybody's in. I'll do a little bit of teaching, but there's some very strong things that I have to impart before we leave, and that's why they had me all set up for PowerPoint. Thanks, guys, for setting it up. But I figured if I try to follow a PowerPoint, I will not release what needs to be released. So the first thing I want to say is that as we're restoring Arizona's prophetic remnant, we're going to have to war through the power of the God of Breakthrough. You know, God reveals himself in many different names. It's time for us to come in the name of the God of Breakthrough. Yeah. See, in David's, David's life, David gets a, a, a prophetic word that you're going to be a king. And then he goes through cycles and seasons. It wasn't just one season of Saul trying to kill David. David went through seven different cycles. I follow his life and I see seven different times he has breakthrough. But it says in 2 Samuel 5, 17, 2 Samuel 5, 17, when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went to seek out David. And when David heard of it, he went down to the stronghold. Now let's stop there at 5, 17. When the Philistines heard that David had finally been anointed king, when David hit his destiny, his ultimate destiny, he's been going through seasons and cycles. And that's what we've been going through, seasons and cycles. But when he was hitting that most important thing, what Samuel said, you will be king over the entire nation. All the Philistines came unglued to try to stop it from happening. And so then he goes to the stronghold. See, we need to develop godly strongholds. As we are dismantling ungodly strongholds, we need to develop godly strongholds. And so with the true repentance and true remorse and the true turning from sin and turning from the flesh and taking accountability and responsibility for our sinful ways, the church is going to develop a godly stronghold. And in our godly stronghold, it's also going to be in our unity together. These times that we convene, that you see each other eye to eye, and you know you've been praying each other eye to eye, and we've been working this thing together, and we're taking ground, and we're not giving it up, and we're not going back. We're moving forward. We're advancing, and we're going to see the kingdom of God release the glory of God in Arizona into the nation, says the Lord. Yeah. We just have to decide that's our marching order. Yes. So... David goes to the stronghold. We have to develop godly strongholds. God is shaking us free from every ungodly stronghold. And that's where, this is where this treacherous spirit, God's shaking somebody's life and they'd rather get mad at me or get mad at you than deal with their sin. Instead of getting, you know, they want to say they're in ministry, but instead of getting deliverance from somebody in ministry, they'll, they'll go take their ministry away. You take the coal away from the fire. The fire will go out. And, and they're all saying the Lord sent me somewhere else, but the, I hope the Lord sends them somewhere where they'll get some help. Right? Because everybody's leaving, but they're just really running from dealing with, with the things that God said, you have to deal with this stuff now in this window because you cannot take this stuff with you to war to dislodge the enemy that is standing in your door. Yeah. We need to get an offering basket up here. Okay, so now. I'm, 
I'm serious. This, this. So in this window, God wants us to get this stuff out. This is part of breakthrough. You're not breaking down. You're breaking through. But I have to say, why does this keep coming up in my life? What is going on in my life? And I have to go to my dear friends. And I, I thank the Lord for people on my team. They're in here. You're part of our team. Stand up right now. I just want to thank you publicly for praying, for standing. Give all this. This is our Skyway Apostolic team. I just stand up, ladies. You're part of the team. Praise God. I go to team. I said, what is inside of me that's causing all this stuff to come up? And they say, Pastor, you just have to keep going forward. We have to get our face like a flint. Boy, it hurts, doesn't it? So we, we're we going to develop a godly stronghold. Put that down. You say, man, if I'm going to break through, i got to develop a godly stronghold. i got to get the ungodly strongholds out of my life. God is through playing games. I and we'll play this game, brother, how are you? Oh, brother, I'm fine. And it's like... I got to start preaching. Here we go. So when, when all the... It's like everything broke loose to stop him from reaching his destiny. If what brother Chuck said is true, that the glory is going to get loose to the nation out of Arizona... How many think that all of the Philistines should come against Arizona right now? Yeah. And that's why brothers turn against brother. All this treacherous stuff's going on. Because, see, the end game for God is the nations. The end game for the devil is to take people to hell. And we're just getting mad at each other about things that really don't matter. That's right. So I think that we're just right here. David went through cycle, season, season, season. And every time before you break through into your next season, into your next realm. And so if what Brother Chuck is saying is true, that Arizona is going to be one of the 21 states that has been marked for God, that's going to release the glory of God. And he said that even Arizona is going to be the first state. So that means when we finally break through, it's going to release something for the other 20 states in this nation to break through. Is that accurate? Is that accurate? So if that is accurate, do you see how, how much the enemy wants to stop our domino from falling? And that's why we have to convene more and more. We really need to at least convene during the feast. Yes. Arizona must convene during the feast. And I would I just ask all of you, prioritize gathering Arizona together during the time of the feast. And so the other times we will convene as well. But I think that's one of the most important, those, at least those three. So David went to Baal Perazim. And David defeated them there. And he said, the Lord broke through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. Therefore, he, named, he called on the name of the place Baal Perazim. He called it the Lord of breakthrough. David reached destiny by warring with the God of breakthrough. And I think that's what we need to strategize with that. We are going to war with the God of breakthrough. Angelic hosts have come to aid us right now. And we're not here to worship angels. We're not here to glorify that angels are around. But I'm telling you, angels are on assignment and angels are here yes. right now. Yes. Right now. Yes. In this room. Yes. Yes. And what are they waiting to do? The angels of the Lord are there to perform the word of the Lord on behalf of the heirs of salvation. When we align with the word of the Lord, what word of the Lord? The written word of the Lord and the assignment of the word of the Lord. When we align with the word of the Lord, the angels of God are released to do warfare on our behalf. Yes, yes Lord. And yes, Lord. legions of warring angels are coming to our aid. Hallelujah. Right now. Hallelujah. Right now. Yes, Lord. But if we are treacherous in the day of the Lord. Psalm 78. Don't go there, but think about it. it. said they had a treacherous bow in the day of battle. We stop the angels from warring on our behalf. So we cannot hold a treacherous bow in the day of battle. 
So you have to war with the God of breakthrough. Now, let me go quickly and talk a little bit about some other keys that I'm seeing. Let's give, I'll give you a couple of definitions for breakthrough. In my book, I, I go out and just get some, some secular definitions for breakthrough. First thing is that I say that breakthrough is a godly word because God calls himself the God of breakthrough. So we're not following a secular vision. But what does secular dictionary say? Well, the dictionary says that breakthrough is this. It is making an important discovery, gaining productive insight, and having a sudden understanding of a complex issue. Making an important discovery, gaining productive insight, a sudden understanding of a complex issue. How many think that maybe that's connected to a prophetic revelation? See, so breakthrough is very much connected to the prophetic dimension of God. See, you get this prophetic revelation, but it has to be this corporate prophetic revelation. Everybody's having their own revelations to go do their own thing. The enemy's going to win. But we have to have a corporate revelation that we all gain insight with. And I think that's what's key about these types of gatherings. Something was released to us this weekend that if you're not here, praise God, you can watch the DVD. You know, the thing about I'll get the DVD. Could you imagine, hey, were you there when Jesus came out of the tomb? No, but I'll get the DVD. You know, it's really... <laughs> Can I say this to a prophetic people? God wants you to move geographically. And this thing that I'll do it at my convenience from my home on my computer all the time because I don't want to be inconvenienced does not release the anointing or grace of God. It usually costs you something to go somewhere. Abraham, where are you going? I don't know. Well, what would you leave behind? Everything. Well, when are you going to stop? When God tells me it's okay to stop. But until that day, I will go and I will look for the city of God. Yes, and we are going to be about the business of God and the prophetic destiny of Arizona because something is going to be loosed out of Arizona. It's going to shift the nation. Amen. But it's going to come through a sudden insight. It's going to come from the Lord giving us a productive insight. And it's going to give us understanding to complex issues. When we come into these types of convocations and when we gather together for prayer at various times in, in different locales, I believe that the things that seem so complex, you will get strategies in a prayer meeting that you will begin to work with. And as that's released corporately, it releases a corporate anointing to everybody that grabs hold of that solution and it just goes viral. And all of a sudden, everybody's using that same solution because God gave us a breakthrough anointing. And so these are the things that you have to be able to grab hold of. Breakthrough is like this. It's connected to the prophetic revelation. A second definition of breakthrough. It's a military advance to go all the way through a front line, removing the obstruction, and then suddenly you advance and remove the barrier to achieve your destiny. So I'm going to say it again. It's a military it's a military advance to go all the way through a front line until you suddenly remove the obstruction. That takes a force multiplier. It takes all of us going in there with the force multiplier and taking it. Because you have to push, push, push all the way through that barrier. And you don't stop once you break through that barrier. You push all the way beyond that barrier. And you establish your new ground on the other side of the barrier. And listen to this. There will be a day when you break through. that This thing that one right now it seems to be your ceiling. When you break through, your ceiling will become your floor. Your ceiling will become your floor. And you think this thing that's so big and so strong, all it's doing is building your muscles right now. And, and the devil says, I'll never, he'll never be able to push me off. And the Lord says, just keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. And every time you break down, you'll begin to great, gain strength. And there will come a time when the, the combined effort of our prayers and our praise and our worship and our strategy and the God of breakthroughs with us, there will be a time when... <laughs> 
We shove that ceiling off of us. And we move through into our next level of breakthrough. I think we have two years. Two years. Two years. Two years. I think harvest is very much connected. As we are warring for our harvest. You know, so we're not warring to have a, 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 a prophetic dance or something like that. That, you know, in, in our process, there can be prophetic dance. But you say, well, what's the end game? The end game is harvest. In game's harvest. And we have to be about what God's about. We have to decide we're going to do what God wants us to do. So these are some key things that we have to be doing. How do we overcome? Blood of the Lamb, word of our testimony, absolutely. But this is one of the things I'm, I'm hearing, and you know, this isn't new to all of you, but we have to become militant against the enemy. And I even think that there's just this thing in America right now that, you know, we just we don't want to be militant about anything. Everything's okay, and I'm not against you. You know, everything's right. But at the end of the day, you better know that there is an enemy, and you need to be willing to fight against your enemy. You say, well, I don't want to fight. I'm tired of fighting. If you just say, I don't want to fight, I'm tired of fighting. The enemy doesn't care. He will still take your ground. When does the enemy come against you? Study the, the, the Bible on warfare. Most of the wars in the Bible happen during the time of harvest. So it's always about harvest. And so if you don't fight, you will lose your harvest. If you don't fight, you'll lose your destiny. You'll lose your inheritance. And this is what, what uh, Lenore was speaking about today. That you, know, you just have this depressing Christianity that has no power. And I believe that the Bible talks to us about a glorious church. The Bible talks yes, to us about a yes. church that's filled with power. Yes. The Bible talks about a church that's yes. holy without spot or blemish. Yes. The Bible talks about churches that even the, their shadow healed the sick. Yes. My friends, I don't want to settle for anything less than a church that looks like the church that I read about in the Bible. Amen. Because the Bible says that the latter house is going to have more glory than the former yes. house. Yes. Wow. Wow. So how are we going? We've got to get militant. James chapter 1, 2 through 4. Just write that scripture down. I'll read it. James 1, 2 through 4. It says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various blessings from the beloved. No, it didn't say that. <laughs> we all love the blessings from the beloved. When you get various trials, you're like, rah, 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 rah. people doing Christian cussing and stuff. Stop that, all right? Just stop it. It's wrong. I hear people doing Christian cuss. I'm like, dude, that's still cussing. Stop it. Like, no, it's Christian cuss. No, it's cussing. Let no profane word come out of your mouth. Oh, man. I'm trying. I just have too much fun. <laughs> Consider it all what? Joy. When you encounter various what? Trials. Anybody in a trial? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> uh, did you hear that collective groan? Oh, uh, I'm in a trial. It's horrible. I just want to go home and sleep. You, know, you have to have something different inside of you. We need new joy. Yeah. You know, and that's why I have so much fun when I preach. It's the anointing of God. I, just, I have an anointing to have fun. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, it's like, man, you got, you're always having fun. It, it's just the anointing of God. Because I'm always in trouble. You know what I mean? It's like, wow, you're so happy. <laughs> Look at all my trials, you know? It's like... See, we have to get some joy. Yes. Church needs some joy. Yes. Yes. The church needs to operate in joy. Yes. And, and so I think we've been so busy doing stuff wearing us out that it's like, check it off the list. What's the next thing i got to do? If the church needs to get back into genuine, godly joy. <laughs> Who needs joy? Stand up right now. No, we're not done. 
Some of you are like, he's done? No. I'm just in party. I'm just in party. <laughs> Lord, everybody that's going through trials and they feel like their joy's been drained, I pray for a fresh impartation of joy. A fresh impartation of joy. I break off all heaviness right now in the name of Jesus. I just break down, sever all heaviness now in the name of Jesus. All weariness I sever in the name of Jesus. Just cut it off, cut it off, shake it off, take a step, move around, do something different. Just tell the Lord, I'm going to move in joy. I'm going to move in joy. New joy for a new season. Breakthrough into a new joy. Release a shout. was fun. The devil's like, oh, I hate it when they laugh. <laughs> They're laughing. They're laughing at him. Ah! You know, there'll be a day when we'll check him out and we'll go, that's the one? Yes. That's this? We'll all be looking at each other like, that's the one? Yeah. He's the one that gave us all this trouble? All right, you have to have new joy for a new season. And, and really, one of the gifts that I have, I, I just impart things. See, so just, just get around me, I'll impart it to you. And that is, it's an amazing thing, and that's why it's so important who you're aligned with, who you're connected with, because you'll get imparted to the people that you look up to. And you, some stuff you don't want imparted. Okay? And so... I'm telling you, new joy for a new season. And the Lord told me, he said, he said, you're going to break stuff off of people in that session that needed it to be broken off. And you're just going to have fun. And you're going to hear yourself laugh. And, 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 and I know, have you ever heard yourself laugh? And it kind of, you know, you're like, Sarah, you're like, oh, all of those me. You know what I'm saying? You laugh. No, it wasn't me. Yes, it was the only other one in the tent. It was you. You know? Have you ever just heard yourself laugh and it startled you? It's because you've been way too serious with too many trials. And we just, we need to just lighten up in the Holy Ghost and just get, get free of a lot of stuff. And I'm just staying on it right now because I'm still breaking some stuff right now. You're just, you're just going to have some surgery right now, not even know it. You're thinking, I thought after surgery, you feel like you died. No, you feel better. Take a little bit more. Just have a little bit more. <laughs> this is the anointing of God right now. Some of you are like, man, this dude's funny. Not really not that funny. It's just God, you know? the DVD. What, what was going on there? <laughs> I gotta calm down before I get it, all right? <laughs> we, have, we have some staffings. My staff is so, where we have our staffing is big on the table. And there was this one time we were all getting hit by the anointing of laughter on one end. And the other staff, the other end of the table, getting mad at us because we couldn't talk without laughing. <laughs> and they'd be go, "We can't hear you down there." We go, ah! <laughs> "Sometimes you just need some joy to break through the trials." Amen. All right, let's let's see if there's anything else in here. It's chaos, unbelievable. All right, so knowing that the testing of your faith, everybody say testing of my faith. Testing of my faith. A test is usually difficult. It's revealing to you the level of faith that is getting built up inside. Your faith is a muscle. Yeah. And so uh, look at the natural and look at the, the spiritual. First comes the natural, then the spiritual. True? True. Yeah. The Bible says first the natural, then the spiritual. 
What's going on in our nation right now is a, is a big shift towards being healthy, healthy in how you eat, healthy in getting your body in shape. And, and people are, are mind, you know, at least we're aware that we need to be in better shape, eat better, exercise, things like that, become more muscular, and, and then you'll have better health. Do you think that there could be any correlation that God might be saying the same thing to the church about our faith muscles yes. right now? I mean, our faith muscles have been eating way too many Doritos. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> too many apple pies. <laughs> that, was, that was enough of the rest of the year for me. It was like, whoa, what was in that? Okay, so you're, the testing of your faith. Produces what? Endurance. endurance. What is endurance? The Greek word hupomone means the undergirding structure of a bridge so that it can hold up under weight. And the things you have not been able to hold up under in the past, you will hold up under as you're breaking through into your next season. The things that you say, I can't take this anymore. There'll be a day you go like, how much longer do you need me to hold this? Because your faith is being tested, it's being developed, and it's developing your hupomone, that ability to endure under stress. And when we are able to endure under stress, and this is what I'm telling Christians all around, you know, we say, why don't your neighbors come to church with you? Because you're a mess. And, you know, it's like, they look at you and say, man, if I don't want to be a Christian. I'd be a mess like that person. Christians need to have a little bit more endurance. We need to have a little bit more strength. We need to have something that's just a little bit better with the guy down the street who says, I don't believe in God. We better have something different that we that they can look at our life and examine our life and say, man, you are able to hold up. Why? Because during these tests, God built my faith. During these trials, God has built my faith. And we have been through a tough thing in Arizona. And Arizona has gone through the meal. But I declare in the name of Jesus that we are going to come back with a vengeance. Yeah. With the strength of God as the church in Arizona. In yes. Jesus' name. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. So count it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. Knowing the testing of your faith produces the endurance. And that... Endurance will have its perfect result. Everybody say perfect result. perfect result. Now the perfect result is not a sinless result, but it's perfect in timing. So our goal is to shed sin, yes. But the perfect result is that at the right time, this word perfect is connected to time in the sense that when you put something in the oven to bake, it has to bake a certain amount of time before you take it out of the oven. And if you take it out the right time, then what you're eating is perfect. Does that make sense? And so how long is God going to let us go under this stress? Until the perfect time. It's the right time. But, you know, God's not going to kill us. He might kill our flesh. Is that all right? And you say, well, what if it does kill you? Well, then you just go to heaven and be with Jesus and you're done doing that. You're done doing that. <laughs> but it's, it's going to, we're going to be all right. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're going to be all right. <laughs> because it's going to happen at the perfect time. So there's a perfect time for three generations to begin to confess the same word. As we enter into the same declaration, and, and Chuck was breaking it down from 33 and under, and then 33 to 70, and 70 and beyond. That was this breakdown that he gave us last night. So that you get three generations that are in agreement. And so this is very crucial for us to start working as a prophetic church that all the generations are holding up as long as we have to hold up and stop warring with each other, but war for each other. And at the perfect time, we're going to pass the test and break through into our next season. It's very important for us to be able to grasp that. Okay, So we have to be able to see this coming. Now, the last thing I want to want to talk about because I really want to respect time and there's something very important to impart to you is there's two key moments for every breakthrough now, and I talk about this at length in the book but I'm just going to summarize it right now 
The end of one season is a key moment. And the beginning of your next season is a key moment. And this is what Chuck was talking about, shifting through your transition. Remember he said, you've got to stop saying I'm shifting and shift. Right? And, you know, what, what's Lance Wallnow's definition of a transition? Does anybody remember, hear what Lance says about that? He says that, you know, while I'm in transition, it really means you're going through hell till it finally stops, you know? And I'm in transition, you know? Lance is kind of crude, but anyway, so. No. Uh, I love Lance. I mean, Lance is drinking from a fire hose, isn't he? You know? That you just... 45 minutes with Lance takes three weeks to understand what you just heard. So. I'll write a book, Brown Interprets Wall Now, you know? So. It'll be a bestseller. And Lance is like, hey! All right. So, two key times for breakthrough. The end of your season and why. Because when you finally get to the end of the season, you finally got stuff worked out pretty smooth. And it's usually going to take some level of problems, persecution, trials. Something is going to upset your apple cart of what was working just fine. Because the season's ending. And we will do anything in our power to not let that old season end. Because it finally got comfortable. And the one thing that God does not seem interested in is our comfort. Right? It's like, and so at the end of that, there's usually when something's, you know, it's like, well, it's falling apart. Why isn't it working anymore? Why is this? Because God's saying it's time to move on. And so even in the prophetic movement of Arizona, we have gone through a transition where it seems like things have, have drifted apart and things of that nature. But I heard the clarion call back last August. The Lord said, Greg, you have to regather Arizona. You have to work with the leaders of Arizona. And we're reaching into all areas of the state. I'm not just talking about Maricopa County. I'm talking about all of Arizona. Because one of the things we have to be careful about here in Mar Maricopa County Every ministry in the world wants to have a conference in Maricopa County. And every week, you can, you can be conferenced out and never advance the kingdom one day. You can get another series, another book, another anointing, fall down one more time. When are we going to advance the kingdom in Arizona? And so we really need convocations for advancement. And so this, these are some of the things. So at the end of a season, we... We have to get uncomfortable and say, we're going to break through these things that we need to break through. Okay? Because if we don't, we just stay in a comfort zone. It could just become like, like Christian Disneyland. You know, when I was at the Apostolic Centers of Rising, uh, Brother Stephen uh, from Freedom Outpost, he gave this analogy that the church should be like an aircraft carrier. And he talked about all these things, how the church like an aircraft carrier. In my mind, I was thinking, we're trying to make the church look like a cruise ship. Yeah. 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 And so I'm going to build a PowerPoint with the cruise ship church. <laughs> or the aircraft carrier church. And we have to decide which one we're going to build. Yeah. Amen. You know that? So, but then the, the second part of breakthrough is the beginning of the next season. And why the beginning of the next season is so difficult? Because you have to gain new skills and new strategies. Because the only reason you're breaking through is because you haven't been there before. And so to break through into your next season, you have to gain new skills and new strategies. And the prophetic church in Arizona needs to gain new skills and new strategies for this season to break through and release the glory that's going to come out of Arizona to the rest of the nation. So it, you have to just spend time with God and just get these things. And then you have to spend time with each other to share these things. But the, but the awesome thing is, is once it gets going, it really starts moving with, with some real acceleration. That's, what, that's the word Chuck used yesterday, he said acceleration. And that's what I'm seeing is that, you know, Chuck was saying at the next feast, 
And that's why I think we really need to convene at the next feast. Is that starting in the next feast, we're going to move in our acceleration in our two-year window. And that's what I've been hearing the Lord say. I'm going to close with this very, very important truth. We're going to have to see ourselves the way God sees us. To accomplish what God wants us to accomplish. Now, one of these trials that I've been going through in my own life, uh, in our ministry and everything else, I had this dream where this thing came into the room and I viewed myself, it was like a giant that cast a shadow over me and I looked really small. I, I remember looking up to it when it came in the room and, and prophetically what that dream was saying, there are things in my life and I knew, I knew specifically what this thing was, but there are things in our life that even when we think about them, suddenly they're huge and we're little. And you don't even want to think about those things. You say, why did you bring that up? Because it just makes you feel bad about yourself. But in this dream, this thing came into the room. I saw it so big. And I saw myself so small. And it walked by me. And I remember just standing there thinking poorly about myself. And the Lord spoke to me. He said this to me. He says, I cannot work in this situation because you do not see yourself correctly. Oh, preach it. Wow. I cannot work in this situation because you do not see yourself correctly. And so I heard that voice behind me in this dream and I turned around and that thing that had walked past me being so big, when I turned around, it was a little child in front of me. It had become so small. And it was like the Lord spoke to me a now word of revelation that the reason I was not gaining breakthrough in this circumstance was because my perception of myself in this moment was incorrect. And it was stopping God from doing what he needed to do in this circumstance. So I said, Lord, that's an amazing revelation. And so we had this situation come up. And... Uh, I was going to be in the room with these guys. And, and, and so we have this, this big meeting with the bank. And it's all, it's, Christian ministries, it's always going to come down to money. What, if I ask most Christian ministers and ministry leaders, what's stopping you from advancing your vision? If we all got to the end of the day, we'd say, how much money's in the checkbook? And we met with the bank. And, and the bank, would, and so I said, Lord, I'm going to do what you said. And he said, you're going to cast a vision. And so I had this big meeting last week, and here they come. And so they say, so tell us what's going on. And I started casting the vision of where we're going as a ministry. And I'm telling you, they, they, they even brought in the top guy because like the person in, in this one level that I've been working with, they brought, you know, we're bringing in our boss and everything. Like it's going to be this big confrontation. We pay our bills. I don't want anybody to say, well, doesn't he pay his bills? No, we pay our bills. We have more money now than we had last year. But, you know, banks like you to have lots of money. <laughs> what are you going to do to get more money? You know? But the Lord said, you need to, you need to cast your vision to them. So they, they opened up dialogue. I cast the vision. They were, the whole atmosphere shifted. Amen. All of a sudden, they're like, that's an amazing vision. That's incredible. This is a good thing to be doing. And then, then all of a sudden they were supporting. All of a sudden they went from being really big and being really small. It was like they just came around on our side of the table to be on our team. How about that? How about that? Pow, pow, yeah. Yes, Lord. But before we walk out of here, there's something in your life that you're looking at in an improper way. It's stopping God from working. Yes. And I want to break that off you. Stand up. This is our close. <laughs> Father, I thank you that there is no lack of power and authority in the kingdom of God. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. 
and the glory forever and ever. But God, we see ourselves so small against these certain things. And I want you to see it. And I want you to just close your eyes. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know that, man, I've been looking at this thing with the wrong set of glasses. You just acknowledge to God and say, Lord, I repent that I have not seen myself the way you see me, the way you created me. I choose to step out in faith and stand in your strength, in your grace, in your power, and overcome this enemy that's in my gate. Now, in the name of Jesus, I say, I'm passing through my gate. I will not stand terrified. I'm moving through my gate into my destiny. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right.